Hello. Uh, welcome to our session. So before we begin, let us introduce ourselves before we jump right into the session. I am Jung-Gun Yu, Technical PM Team Leader and DevOps Engineer of Kakao Games. Nice to meet you. My name is Moon Gong Kim. I'm Service Development Team Leader of Lionheart Studio. And my name is Min Seok Kim, and I am a Solution Architect on AWS. So today, we would like to take you through a journey of launching a massively multiplayer online role-playing game called Odin Valhalla Rising, which was officially launched uh, in July, June 29th last year on AWS. So we will be covering some important aspects of building a successful MMORPG games, including development, hosting, and last but not least, publishing. So these are some key considerations from each milestone that we think it was critical path for a successful game launch. We'll be covering a story of developing a game server of MMORPG game, choosing a right instance type and a database after deciding to host a game on AWS, and how Kakao Games had completely redesign, redesigned their um, analytic pipelines on the cloud. Uh, with that, I will um, let jong -Gun to introduce the company and the game itself. Lionheart Studio, Studio is a multi-platform game development company, which works on several projects in addition to Odin. Kakao Game is, Kakao game is a global game publisher, pro providing game service on various platforms such as PC and mobile. What is Odin Barara Rising? Inspired North mythology, Odin Barara Rising is, is large-scale open-world MMORPG, where players can enjoy a vast world to explore along with a solid story. Being a cross-platform game, we provide players with cross-progression on both PC and mobile. The game is immensely popular in Korea and has won various prizes, including the grand prize at the Korean Game Awards. Now, I will play a short video. My tears had washed away with the falling rain. That very night, after burying my three offspring. As my passing sorrow ends, the flames of fury tear at my soul. You can save the world, and only medicine shall be upon you. Yet, never forget, I, like you once believed, Odin's venison upon me too. Loki, and the myth created by you. Odin Valhalla Rising. Oh, <clears throat> Odin service scale. Odin's live service has been stably operated for more than a year. There are currently 81 world servers. Each service has deep, six different in-game brands where players enjoy large variety of both PvE and PvP content. In some of the PvP content, players from different servers compete each other. And the server processes about up to 60 million data packets per second. In addition to Korea, we released game, the game in Taiwan in March of this year. Japan's Released 
is ex expected to take place next year with more version to follow. I will hand over to Moongon to explain about the game server design and architecture of the game. From the very beginning, Odin's game server was developed by defining the rule of the MMORPG server. Therefore, we will talk about the design direction which we had in mind during the developing of Odin's server. What rule do client and server play in a massively multiplayer online role-playing game? In an MMORPG, the client is the bridge that allows users to access and play the game. Why the game server is responsible for creating the digital space where users can gather and enjoy the game? To briefly summarize the game server's rules, we can say that, first, responsible for all the artificial intelligence elements such as monsters and NPC. Second, Network processing. Third, probability and rate processing. Fourth, data processing. Fifth, synchronization processing. And last but not least, anti-cheat processing. To summarize the characteristics of audience game server in one sentence, it is a server made for large-scale world MMORPG. What is the most important thing in an MMORPG for large-scale warfare? In addition to the waging rule I've just mentioned, it is also necessary to provide a fast and stable response speed. We want to allow players to gather in one space, fight each other, and have no technical difficulties in doing so. We thought a lot about how we can provide this kind of fast and stable reaction rate. First of all, we developed the game server as a stateful server in TCP IP rather than a serious server in web. A serious web server is a structure that is not suitable for providing users with fast response speeds, although it has advantages in connecting and processing many users. In addition, in order to provide users with a faster response speed, all logged in users and server status information are loaded into the server's memory. Although the server's memory uses increased significantly, faster response speed was more important than optimizing memory usage. This is due to the nature of the server. However, data in memory can be lost at any time if the server hardware shut down due to various reasons such as a sudden power outage. Game servers must reliably store and deliver users' data. So, in order to ensure data stability, we chose to store data in the database at regular intervals. Now let's talk about development continuity. MMORPG service is like a marathon. Releasing the game is just the beginning. In general, an MMORPG's lifespan can be as short as three years to 20 years and beyond. In order to provide a live service for a long time, while constantly adding new contents and improvements, the structure of the game server must be easy to understand and work with. A simplified structure of our game server looks like this. As you can see, it's pretty simple. It consists of network I/O threads, one main logic thread, and several data I/O threads. The worried I/O part is handled by multiple threads, and the main logic thread main logic of the game is handled by one thread. Some people may look at the structure of the game server and wonder why there is only one main logic thread. To answer this question, 
we will look at the upside and downside to both single logic thread structure and multi logic thread structure. The biggest drawback of the single logic thread structure is the relatively low utilization of multi core. However, it has comparative upsides in the following areas debugging complexity, server stability maintenance, new developer adaptation speed, and hardware cost. However, since the multi core utilization was low, it was an incomparable structure for service in a cloud environment such as AWS. Then, why did we choose this single logic thread method? When we started to develop the game, we had a tight schedule, a lot to do, and a very small team of developers. Also, we couldn't predict whether the game service would be delivered on promise or cloud. So when we designed the server's architecture in the early stage of development, developing speed, debugging convenience, and server stability were more important than cloud suitability. In some other companies, game servers are developed with a single logic thread structure during the early stage of development. After a while, it will change to multi-logic thread before the game's release. However, we chose to continue with the single logic thread structure even after the game's release. As a result, we will provide a stable service while maintaining a low server crash rate for more than a year now. Our new developers learn fast and can create everything in a timely manner. Here are the members of the server development team during the time of our game's release in Korea. As you can see, there are only six people, including the team leader. But now, many people have joined our company, which makes everything better. The six people I just mentioned have developed these systems before the game's release. Also, we've been constantly developing additional content since the game's release. Recently, we added the defense game style contents. Also, Castle Siege contents will be added tomorrow. Can you guess what's going on here? This screenshot is taken from our Raid Boss event. You can see a huge number of users gathering in one area and hunting the same boss together. When users gather in one area, there is a huge amount of data packet transmission. Each time a user attacks, the user sends a packet to all the other users who are nearby. It can increase to more than a square number of users. For example, when 2,000 of users are gathered in one area, if each user attacks once, a total of 4 million packets are generated. In terms of seconds, that's close to 10 million packets. Of course, we don't transmit that much packets through various processing, but we still get over a million packets per second. To reduce this load, we separated the servers dedicated to broadcasting into two different servers. As a result, we were able to provide a service without much wreck, even when thousands of users were fighting at the same time and at the same price. We will explain more about those two servers in the service architecture description. This graph shows the number of crashes that occurred in the game server over the course of six months after the game release. Compared to other comparative MMORPGs, which have bigger development steps than us, the game service has been stable. 
If you look at the release time, you can see that it's very stable. So far, I have explained the characteristics and performance of audience game server. From now on, I will go over the game service structure. <clears throat> what you see here is a schematic diagram of audience game service structure. When users wish to enter the game, they log in through their game client first. When that happens, users access the login server using ERB provided by AWS. After a successful login process, which various authentication measures, a list of accessible game worlds will appear. After users select a world server, they will be connected to the gateway server and chess server of that game world. As you can see here, users do not directly access the game server. They connect only to the gateway server and chess server. Let me start with the gateway server and explain why it was designed this way. In this way, having a gateway server in the middle gives many advantages. The first advantage is the packet broadcasting part, which has the most immediate effect on the game. Through stress testing, we have confirmed that when thousands of users gather in the same space for a both raid or war, about 50% of the load on the game server is due to packet broadcasting. We made a gateway that can take charge of this broadcasting load, and it was operated while expanding or reducing the number of gateways according to the amount of load. Second, by blocking the user's direct access to the game server, it was possible to provide a more secure service to the server's data and database. So, even if there are multiple game server, users can access them through the same gateway server, enabling seamless movement between servers. As I mentioned before, the game server has a simple structure. It has several I.O. threads and one main logic thread. That's why single core performance of CPU is so important. Also, it is designed in a structure that can be separated according to the game's type of contents. According to this design structure, the gateway server and game server had the ratio of N to M depending on the amount of server load. In the beginning of the game's release, a lot of users concentrated on a few specific maps. Back then, we provide a ratio of three gateway server to one game server. These days, we provide a ratio of one gateway server to one game server. Now to the database part. In Odin, the database is only responsible for simple data storage, as I said earlier. Nevertheless, to provide, to provide a reliable service, we decided to store it in the database at intervals that are as short as possible. In addition, large amount of log data for customer service processing as well as business information indicator processing are stored in the database. Because the amount of stored data is so massive, we had to consider the following during the database selection process. Low response latency, high data throughput, and high availability. This will be explained in more detail later in the process of onboarding to the AWS part. Mm. 
so far, we have explained the overall structure of Odin Game Server service. From here on, we will tell you about how we were onboarding to AWS. While thinking about the characteristics of Odin Game Service structure and how the service is being performed. Many of, many of you here are thinking about whether to use on-premise or cloud environment while for propagating the service. First, let's look at the important factor regarding Odin Game Server. Since it is a single logic thread structure, the CPU's performance of a single core important. And it must have easy to configure infrastructure which can provide us the following. Fast scalability for traffic increase. High availability, minimize failure. And assistance in global service. What did we choose? We chose this. Look at this for consideration, except for single core performance, we decided that the cloud environment has upsize. And we chose a cloud environment that can flexibly change the capacity plane according to the service situation. But one problem remains. How to overcome the single core performance issue of the CPU in the AWS environment? Naturally, when selecting an AWS EC2 type, we had to use highest clocked equipment. At the time Odin launched in Korea, the highest clocked device among AWS EC2 type was the G1D type. Although the M5ZN showed highest performance than G1D. It was available in the Seoul region at that time. We tested performance of various EC2 type in order to select the suitable EC2 type for Odin. In addition to check performance different between the physical equipment with the EC2. Physical equipment in a similar environment was also tested. When we set the best performance G1 6250 as 100 points and tested other EC2 equipment. Performance was best is order of M5ZN, G1D, C5. We considered using the G16250, but it was difficult to get it quickly in Korea due to the semiconductor supply issue last year. After selecting the EC2 type as G1D, a performance test was conducted to select a suitable size. The size range from large to 12x large for G1D. Performance test figure for the EC2 size show little difference between 6x large and 12x large. Thus, we choose the 6x large size. Let me explain why. If you, look, if you look at the characteristics of EC2, the physical equipment that the EC2 hypervise runs on is operated with two physical CPUs. To fully utilize one of the two CPUs, we had to use half of the maximum size supported size. The maximum size of G1D is 12 extra. Out of two CPUs, we used only one using 6 x large because it provided full performance. 
This is important for Odin game server running as a single logic thread. If you are considering a service where single core performance is important, please refer to this graph. Finally, we selected G1D 6 x when Odin was released. After the M5GN equipment was launched in the Seoul region, we switched to M5GN. Now, we will talk about performance testing on the AWS Windows Server. We had some difficulties along the way. The image on the left is VM equipment, and on the right is weather equipment. Looking at the image, you can tell that the CPU cores of the VM equipment are equally used. Odin used a single logic thread by its nature. So rather than using all threads equally, the usage rate of the specific CPU is high. Nevertheless, it looks like all core are used equally in the AWS VM environment. This can be considered as a characteristics of AWS VMs. However, if you look at the weather equipment on the right that use physical equipment without using VM, you can see that in many use a specific core. In order to monitor accurate core users of your single thread application on AWS, you can use your metal equipment to check the exact CPU core users indicate on your AWS Windows equipment. Alternatively, this is necessary to be developed. So the data you want to, to measure is left on the server you use and develop on. All right, I will be taking from here. So um, in addition to choosing the right size and right instance type, so we as AWS also provided some optimization points that can increase gateway server's performance and its reliability. First option was configuring the Amazon Elastic Network Adapter, or ENA. Amazon ENA is a custom network interface that leverages single root IO virtualization, optimized to deliver high throughput and high packet per second performance and consistently low latencies on EC2 instance. Windows, AMI, Windows AMIs or Amazon Machine Image includes Amazon ENA driver, and we recommended you to maintain the latest ENA driver version as it introduces new features and bug fixes. You can use Amazon SNS to notify you when new versions of drivers are released. Also, increasing the receive buffers to 8,192 in the ENA advanced properties. As Bungan had mentioned, MMORPG generates tons of network packets, so increasing its value to maximum that AWS supports can help you from um, having a possible packet losses. To achieve the maximum network performance on instance, you might need to modify the default operating system configuration as well. Receive size scaling, or RSS, is used to distribute network traffic CPU load across multiple proce processors. By default, the official Amazon AM Windows AMIs are configured with RSS enabled, and ENA ENIs provided up to eight RSS queues. By defining CPU affinity for RSS queues, as, as well as for other system processes, it is possible to spread the CPU load out over to multi-core system, enabling more network traffic to be processed. On an instance type with more than 16 vCPUs, we recommend you to manually exclude the boot processors uh, from the RSS configuration for all ENIs. 
in order to prevent contentions with various system components. Next option was to optimize the CPU option for the game servers to disable the hyper-threading, which performs well for workloads with single-threaded CPU. Since multi-threading is enabled by default, we recommend it to specify one thread per core to disable during the EC2 launch. One thing you need to know about CPU options that it only can be configured during the launch time. So after the launch, you won't be able to change this configuration, so you will need to do this uh, during the launch time. So before we jump into the database part on AWS, I will quickly want to um, check some several considerations, uh, review the several considerations that when hosting a game server on Amazon. So Amazon EC2 is a virtualized, in virtualized environment unless you are using a uh, bare metal instance site. So if you are developing a single-threaded applications, then please start with selecting a half size of maximum of that instance type because it gives you a full core performance. And then also disable the hyper-threading option as well. And further optimize your performance by configuring the networking and operating system part as well. And last but not least, always evaluate the new instance type because it gives you more performance and better price as well. So the database part. A database for MMORPG requires both high performance and availability and data durability in production. In Korea, a lot of customers are using commercial database, especially MS SQL, since majority of data developer comes from the Windows background. Some others, including Lionheart here, decided to go with open source database, such as MySQL, for the cost and its simplicity. First, let's look at the commercial database. To achieve high performance and high availability and data durability, a lot of customers had ended up building a self-managed, always-on cluster using Amazon EC2. However, the challenge remains with how performant and durable should your cluster be. You would need an internal NVMe storage volume for performance. However, you also need to consider how to synchronize your data across availability zone for data durability, and it all comes with cost. The architecture for MS SQL shown here is not an exhausted list and is heavily dependent on your strategy. And for the open source database like MySQL, um, developing a cluster is more hard and more complex. Plus, you'll have to deal with data backups, failovers, patching, in addition to the architecting your um, cluster. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, Lionheart had decided to go with MySQL from the very beginning of the game design phase. And the good news was that um, AWS has Amazon Aurora database, which offers both um, enterprise level performance, availability, and data durability with simplicity and cost effectiveness, cost effectiveness as well. Amazon Aurora provides you up to five times more throughput and low latency compared to the standard MySQL, and it stores six copies of the data across different AZs, and also provides you a read replica, which enables you to fail over fast. Since it is a fully managed services, it automates time-consuming management tasks like hardware provisioning, database setup, patching, and backups. So AWS had proposed to use Amazon Aurora as a main database for the game during the, design, you know, during the development phase, and in my opinion, it was one of the key factors to the successful launch. Now, Bungon will share how they choose the right instance type for Aurora for their game. <clears throat> Earlier, we explained that the Odin game server has many IO threads and one logic thread. In order to maximize the performance of one logic thread, it is recommended to minimize the number of IO threads if it doesn't become a bug rate. No matter how few IO threads we wanted to use, the server has to use more IO threads than the number of CPUs because the server must handle thousands of users. If more threads are used than CPUs, a context switching issue occurs. 
Although most IOS threads operate on CPUs that are not related to the main logic threads, they still slightly affect the performance of the main logic threads. We mentioned that the database is used for simple data backup, but nonetheless, a lot of data is being written in the database for the sake of data stability and data analysis. Because of these characteristics, a database capable of providing sufficient throughput while utilizing as few IO threads as possible was required. In a nutshell, it is a database with high response rate and high throughput. Among them, high response rate was more important than high throughput to utilize a small number of IO threads. All instances of RDS on AWS are optimized for multi-core uses with low per core performance. Also, as with EC2, to fully use one CPU throat, you need to select a size that is bigger than half the size of EC2. To configure the optimal service environment under these limited conditions, we, con we conducted various comparative tests to select a database equipment. The next step was choosing between RDS for MySQL and RDS Aurora. At first, we considered running the My MySQL server directly on a high performance EC2 instance such as G1D and providing the game service. However, we removed this option for several operational and administrative reasons. In conclusion, we choose RDS Aurora. Looking at the performance testing results, Aurora's response time was at least 30% faster in all device and environments. You can find more information about Aurora online. We chose Aurora because it has faster response time. Our next step was choosing CPU types on Aurora. Aurora has M5 and R5 types using Intel CPU and the R6 type using ARM-based Graviton CPU. I know new types with better CPU performance have been added recently, but it was not an option for us when we first launched Odin. We tested the difference between these two, and when the number of connections was low, the performance was similar. However, when the connections surpassed a certain number, the R6G type showed about a 10% higher performance, 10% uh, higher processing performance, and slightly faster reaction speed. ARM-based Graviton CPUs shows higher performance than Intel CPUs as the core were utilized to the full risk. However, at the time of Odin's release, it was launched as the R5 type. That was due to frequent database maintenance issues of the R6G type. After one year of game service, we decided that the R6G type is stable so we switch it to that server. Up to this point, I have explained how the Odin game service was onboarded in the AWS environment. Now let's talk about the publishing part. So uh, there are a lot of parts to consider when it comes to publishing a game. Uh, which includes continuous integrations, deployment, and distributing your client codes, and then monitoring, and et cetera. But the most critical part was to analyze the data from the game, and this is the area where AWS had helped Kakao Games a lot. The success of the game, especially based on MMORPG, is determined by the user reaction on the very first day. Reacting to users' behavior in real time based on the data collected processed and analyzed provides you important information to decide. Kakao Games had their own big data platform in on-premises environment, 
but it was not scalable and flexible enough to onboard new games, including Odin Barala Rising. So prior to the game launch, Kakao Games had decided to build a new data lake on AWS that is highly scalable and was able to store any type of data with minimum operational overhead. So with the help of AWS professional services and solution architects, Kakao Games has, was able to build a, a game analytic pipelines for both real-time and batch processing using these services, as you can see on this slide. Overall, data is collected from the clients and the Kakao Games platform based on Kinesis data streams. A new pipeline stores its raw data to Amazon S3 with, Kamaz with Amazon Kinesis data firehose. Data is then processed with Amazon EMR, Amazon Athena, and Amazon Redshift, referring to the data catalog created by AWS Glue. Processed data are once again stored into another Amazon S3 and consumed by various visualization tools that you can see in the very right-hand side that Kakao Games was already using. So let's see the high-level architecture here. Data pipelines can be categorized into real-time and batch processing, two part. For real-time analysis, data are stored into both S3 and open source based on the data category that Kakao Games had defined. And use Amazon Athena to query the data from S3 and Kibana for data consumption on Amazon open source service. For batch processing, raw data stored in Amazon S3 are processed with Amazon EMR, and then results are also stored in a different S3 bucket, which are finally loaded into Amazon Redshift for a consumption. Now let's look at the log format, which is generated by the platform, and look at the real-time processing pipeline. Uh, understanding your raw data and your requirements are important. I will want to emphasize that game analytic pipelines, like other analytic pipelines, is different from one to another because it, de it depends on your re requirements and the raw data that the platform is collecting. At first, at first glimpse, uh, the format looked like JSON, but ac actually it wasn't. So as you can see here, uh, the log format, there is a code uh, color-coded with rose color which indicates specific actions from the game, such as item, purchase, action, and et cetera. Uh, in this example, this is log about the items. And then comes the log body, highlight, highlighted in the orange color, which contains actual data, which Kakao Games wanted to analyze. The log body, the log body field are and will be dynamic, dynamically changed based on game launch and its code. So as you can see here, um, it's about the uh, item log, and it, see, it says that the user has picked up specific items, and you can see the quantity and the user ID and other inf information that Kakao wants to uh, process. Uh, since data engineering team was not able to modify this log format because it was uh, another department, they wanted, we have to build a pre-processing pipeline which extracts the data from this log body and save it to Amazon S3 bucket, categorized by its code value. So again, the log has to be pre-processed and stored into uh, Amazon S3. So what option do we have? Kakao Games and AWS had considered following um, services, including Kinesis Data Analytics, EMR Spark Streaming, AWS Lambda and AWS Glue, which offers a fully managed ETL services uh, for a pre-processing pipeline. Each of its services has its pros and cons, but the most important factor was scalability and performance given the fact that the data needs to be uh, consumed in real time. After conducting a benchmark of each services, Kakao Game had decided to pre-process their data with AWS Lambda because it was easy to code with their familiar Python language, and it was scalable and required less operational overhead since it was serverless service, meaning you don't have to provision any server uh, for this. However, you do have to look out for an account limit, and therefore one needs to conduct a full performance test to see 
to simulate the peak traffic and see if it hits the bottleneck, and if so, you need to raise your account limit accordingly. AWS Lambda automatically pulls the data from Kinesis data streams, and it activates the pre-processing code as a batch, which will basically categorize message into log body by its code field and send it to a designated Kinesis firehose, which will safely store the data accordingly. So the result war, uh, Kakao Game were ab was able to do the real-time data analytics within a minute. And also, they enhanced their performance of their uh, batch processing pipeline uh, as much as three times higher. And with that, they also reduced um, cost saving about 40%. And with this fully managed services, they weren't having any issues with um, maintenance or other kind of things, which they had on their on-premises environment. And then, since the every data is stored into S3, it opened a new opportunity for the data science team as well. So and I would like to uh, briefly introduce what the project that AWS and Kakao Games are doing, doing right now. So um, since Kakao Game is collecting literally every game data into Amazon S3, they are developing a machine learning model which can predict a player churn in MMORPG type of game. Amazon Machine Learning Solutions Lab, which is kind of a professional service that we have, had helped Kakao Games to develop a prototype model and Kakao Game is trying to build a ML ops for production. And I'm looking forward to expand this capability. As you can see, this is a good example of expanding the AI ML features into your game as well. So the key takeaway from today's session. So con consider latest instance type, such as M5 Z10 for better price performance, and further optimize your networking and operating system configuration as I had, I had mentioned earlier. Also, consider Amazon Aurora uh, when you are developing a game because it offers you a high performance, low latency, and durable database. And data analytics are also important for publishing the game as well. So design your data analytic pipelines and test it and see if it can handle the high traffic as well. And with that, you can also see new opportunities and business value with the store data that you have. So with that, I will end um, today's session. Yeah, please um, review our session survey. And then thanks for attending the session. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.